Yeah, we made our way to Dallas, Texas for the first responder bow on Monday afternoon. I am Tyler Mansfield, Western Kentucky beat writer for InsideTheTopperSports.com. And joining me alongside Sean Williams, the master, the publisher, the, the main man behind it all. The belt getter. Belt getter. That's, that's the main <laughs> thing today. So we've been around this town today um, doing sightseeing, but also we've been sightseeing looking for a belt. Because someone, I won't say any names, came to uh, Dallas, Texas without packing their belt from Bowling Green. Uh, I, I guess we could say it was me, maybe. You definitely not borrow, you're not borrowing mine. I won't fit, Sean. <laughs> I mean, you're not bigger than me. What are you trying to say? You're bigger, but not, not big, big, you know? But long story short, we found a belt, and now I'm happy, and I can wear my jeans tomorrow with my shirt tucked in, and we'll be good. Thank God. But guys, we are here. It's bowl <laughs> season, finally. Uh, we've been waiting this, this game for nearly exactly a month tomorrow since their last game against the MTSU. Yeah. Um, Western Kentucky, Western Michigan, on paper, pretty even matchup coming in. Uh, just Sean, your your initial thoughts going through this bowl game? Uh, yeah. I mean, just exciting. I mean, when you haven't played a game in a month, you know, I think uh, I think the players are ready to get get after it. The fans are ready to kind of see what Western does, how they can end the season, if they can uh, cap it off with a win and win nine games in uh, Tyson Helton's first year. I think that'd be a huge accomplishment. Uh, obviously, he's, you know, coach of the year. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, just uh, I think I think the players are antsy, ready to hit somebody else, and. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I mean, it's a pretty good matchup on paper, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I think a lot of people look at Western Michigan and think, well, they're, they're a MAC team. But they got some really good players up and down the, up and down the bottom of both offense and defense. So, Of course, last year they won this three games, Western Kentucky did. This year, you know, a chance to triple that win total in Coach Hilton's first year. Um, no, bowl, no bowl game last year, obviously, with three wins. And mm -hmm. now you're back in a bowl game in Dallas, a new area for Western. But, I mean, look at them. They're 7-4 and all-time in bowl games. Uh, three and two in the FBS era, you know they had some success in Florida bowl games, but now a new area, a new state, kind of just uh, how do you how do you imagine this game playing out? I mean, not really a prediction wise, but it's a new area, new environment. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's you know you kind of go at it both ways. New area, new environment for Western Michigan too. I mean, I think they played yeah. it before previously, maybe a couple of years ago, I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, you you know it's it's a bowl game. I mean, I I think all. Every team that plays in a bowl game has to kind of adapt to new environments, you know, just because bowl games are about playing in neutral sites and, and maybe places you never played before. So. Uh, of course. And when you look at the stack comparison, I mean, this game is pretty much even. You know, they score more points. They're at 34.2, Western's at 25.6. Um, but obviously, looking at Western Michigan on paper, they're good. I mean, 7-5 mm -hmm. and five this year, but, of course, led by their, their MVP running back, Levante yeah. Bellamy. He's very, very good. He was the MAC MVP and the Offensive Player of the Year. Yeah, I mean the guy's pretty good to watch, and of course I know his stats are kind of you know pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, you look at his stats. I mean, twenty three touchdowns uh, on the year. That's more than seventy seven programs mm -hmm. <laughs> combined. That's, that's pretty so, good. That's pretty good. He's got a uh, fourteen hundred yards uh, rushing. I mean, uh, nine of his touchdowns, nine of those twenty three touchdowns are uh, on runs of twenty plus yards. So, I mean, he's actually he's a that means he's a home run hitter. So. Uh, that's definitely the guy you're going to key in on uh, defensively for Western. So you got to try to stop him, and uh, you know, hope uh, you know if you stop him, I think you're going to have a good day against Western Michigan. So, so their quarterback John Wissick's pretty good too. Mm -hmm. Of course, they have Sky Moore, the great receiver. That defense though is was something that we didn't really talk about much till till now. But look at that. They have a guy that what 14 sacks this year on the season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that Ali Fayed. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but it's uh, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Defensive end, uh, his second team, uh, uh, but yeah, he's had uh, fourteen. Uh, what is that? Fourteen tackles for, tackles loss. for loss. Yeah, uh, which is uh, tops on the team. He's got six and a half sacks, which is tops on the team as well. He's also produced four, uh, also produced four fumbles uh, as well. So I mean, he's had a really good season. He's second team all MAC. Um, but I mean, you look at their defense. Treshawn Howard or Hayward. I always say Howard. I don't know. Hayward. Howard. Yeah, yeah, Hayward. <laughs> Treshawn Hayward. So, I mean, he's the man. I mean, he's got 132 tackles. He's uh, mm -hmm. he was uh, you know, Mac Defensive Player of the Year. Um, ten and a half tackles for loss. So, I mean, he's had a really productive season. I mean, that's a guy that uh, you know, offensively, Western Kentucky's got to obviously keep an eye on. But you know, you look kind of up front. You got Hayward, the linebacker. You got uh, Fayed, the defensive end. Uh, they got Timothy Collins too, another defensive end. He's had a real productive year. He's got nine tackles for loss and five sacks. So I mean, they can really produce. They produced a lot of numbers defensively up front with those two defensive end positions and uh, Hayward at the linebacker spot. So, so solid on both sides of the ball, of course. You know, seven and five, Western eight and four. Uh, today we got to go to the uh, stadium at SMU, get our credentials, mm -hmm. look at everything. Um, you know, it's a 
pretty facility. You know, this game's usually at the Cotton Bowl, as we discussed a couple hours yeah, ago. Today. But this year, of course, they had the Winter Classic for the Preds and Dallas Stars. I'd rather be at the Cotton Bowl. It's my, it's good as, as good as SMU's facility. Yeah. Like, and it's a really awesome, beautiful campus, and the stadium's really nice, too. I mean, <laughs> and speaking of cotton, but we tried today to get inside, at, at least get a picture of the front of the entrance. But of course, they had Lock, Fort, Fort Knox security out there. Down like Fort Knox. Up. Yeah, it was it was locked down like Fort Knox, yeah. indeed. So, but hey, we got there. We kind of walked around for a bit. But you know, it's been a been a fun trip so far. A couple of days here in Dallas. Uh, tomorrow's game day. Um, great coverage coming on InsideHilltoppersports.com. Sean will have pictures, videos. We'll have, um, of course, my, my game story and a recap after. Uh, tweets during the game, live shots. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Just so, if you can't be here, make sure you're tuning in live. Twitter at WKU underscore Rivals. Facebook, it's Inside the Topper Sports. A um, lot to come and should be fun. Yeah, we'll have a good time and we'll bring you lots of coverage. So, so guys, stay tuned. For sure. Guys, thanks for tuning in. And, of course, tomorrow's game day. Be good.